Uh, yes, Greta Holby from Ardea Arts with the Three Astronauts Project. I was uh, responding very closely with what Scott showed us on the video, which is kids involved with the arts as a way into science. And I think that that's very important. We keep talking about Twitter and Facebook and social media as a way to engage people, but the arts have always engaged people. And not only that, but the arts in all sorts of ways, as far as entertainment, music, art, in all sorts of ways, reach millions of people. And that's a way to inspire our generations. I also, you're taking courses at MIT. I actually went to MIT. And one of the things that so inspired me at MIT was that it was like the arts. And the arts held an equal position with the sciences. And you'd come into your classes, and the professors would be coming out having worked on the solar panel of the, you know. And it was just extraordinary. And I think, as Scott was just saying, we have to have that excitement in our educational system. Um, the problem with most science, the way it's taught, is that it's so dry and so by the book. And I, and I feel as though, in, we keep saying STEM, but I feel as though if we can start saying STEAM and put the A into the educational, the arts is an extraordinarily uh, fertile place to ignite creativity, which is what we need for the sciences. We can't just learn the sciences. We have to approach it from a creative well. And um, I really feel as though we should be saying STEAM here, and we'd find a lot more people interested in science. Go, Greta, one of the things that we're trying to do in, in education is to partner with people, like-minded people. We met with the Lincoln Center Institute just about two or three weeks ago to talk just about how we can motivate students in the arts to see that there is science, technology, engineering, and math in everything that we do. And when I flew in space for my, my first flight, I took up Quincy Jones as one of his CDs. And when, we, when he interviewed me while I was in space, Quincy so eloquently said, there is math and music. For both of those two things, it uses both the right and left side of the brain. So if you know math, you know music. And if you know music, you know math. But we don't show that in the classrooms. There's a, there's a big divide. You got an art class, and then you got a math class, and they're not connected. So if we can start showing how these two, what seems like dissimilar things are connected, more students will then have this more of a Renaissancean type flavor in their education. And they will look at, you know, music and art and science as a combined thing, not just separate pieces. That's another thing we're trying to do is to bring in entertainers. I've worked with Mary J. Blige, Will I Am, who's put a lot of his resources into FIRST Robotics and an ABC special because the technology part of it is so important and he wants to celebrate. He's coming here to help celebrate this with us tomorrow after, after Curiosity launches. But using musicians, using ball players, the physics of football we taught with into Donovan McNabb's football camp. So we were coming in on the back end teaching kids that if you know physics, you know when you drop down and your center, dra center of gravity gets lower, you're going to be a better ball player. So how do we use all of these different ambassadors, these trust agents that students look up to, ball players and rappers and musicians, to help them sell the STEM message? And I know you say STEAM. I know the arts is in there. But what STEM is in everything. It's in everything we do. And it's very important that we make that connection. Thank you, Leela. One follow-up is that you have that extraordinary, NASA has that extraordinary program now with non-traditional partnerships, and certainly we've been working on our proposal, but I think that that's a very exciting new direction. Thanks.